Hey guys, what's happening? So, with our recent talks about X-Men Blue, and most of it centered around James Hudson Jr., the son of Wolverine from the 1610 universe, in that last video where we talked about James Hudson meeting Dokken, I noticed there was a lot of stuff I had to jump through just to highlight certain points about the both of them, and I realized like, man, we really gotta go back and talk more X-Men, and not just X-Men Blue, but also Red, Gold, <laughs> man, all of that. Because I noticed you guys had a ton of questions, and even though I have referenced some of it in the past, I kinda feel like I just need to make a playlist for each one and that way a lot of these topics will be easier to find. So that's what we're gonna do. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. So starting off, I wanna talk about Beast and his transformation into a sorcerer because this is something that started all the way back in Marvel now and it's been an ongoing process that finally fully manifested in X-Men Blue. And hopefully by covering this first, we won't have to jump out of the main story as much because each step of this process is broken up between so many different issues. But as we build this new playlist, if I need to go back for anything, just hit me in the comments, let me know, and we can go back and flush out those pieces a bit more, which is kind of what this video is doing too. But either way, <laughs> so just starting with the X-Men blue team, we really got our first introduction to them back in Marvel now in the all new X-Men series. And all new X-Men was really a product of the aftermath of House of M and Avengers vs X-Men. Because after House of M when Scarlet Witch nearly wiped out the whole mutant population, Hope Summers was the first mutant born after, and when her powers manifested, this got the attention of the Phoenix Force, which chose her to be the next Avatar, and both the Avengers and the X-Men had different viewpoints on how to resolve this issue. And that's really what ignited Avengers vs X-Men. But when that event escalated and we got our Phoenix Five, Cyclops then became one of the new avatars of the Phoenix Force. And when Professor X, who was called in by Magneto to intervene, he had attempted to reason with Cyclops and Cyclops killed him. And man, at the time, like this was one of the biggest shockers of like any event. And there were other things that kind of led up to this that showed Cyclops losing faith in Charles. But when it actually went down, it was nothing less than jaw dropping. But eventually towards your conclusion of Avengers vs X-Men, Scarlet Witch and Hope Summers become your solution to getting rid of the Phoenix Force and also the return of mutants in the Marvel Universe. And as for Cyclops, well he just killed Professor X so he went to prison. And he didn't get any kind of special treatment, they put him in population with everybody. And they secured him with a helmet with ruby goggles so of course he couldn't just blast anybody. But that was it, aside from that he was pretty much defenseless. But eventually Cyclops was broken out of prison by Magneto, Magic, in danger. And this prison that Cyclops was in, it was pretty corrupt because a friend he had met in that prison, who was also a mutant, was killed by their inmates. And as it turned out, this was orchestrated by the warden. So Magic just pretty much sent all the killers to limbo and left the warden for danger to take care of. Like it was pretty crazy, like creepy and crazy. But not long after that, danger kind of went her own way. And Cyclops now free, he had become an advocate for recruiting these new mutants that have been popping up all over the globe. And in the process, he had also recruited recruited Emma Frost, but as they recruited new mutants, like they didn't care who they took out along the way, especially Cyclops, because at this point, he wanted to be not just the man that he believed Charles Xavier to be, because even though he killed him, at the time he wasn't 100% himself, and underneath it all, he did feel terrible about it. But at the same time, because all he had been through, he still wanted to give mutants a place to train and grow. And that's when he used the older abandoned Weapon X facility to be the new school to train these mutants, naming it after Charles Xavier. And that I won't spend too much time going into because I did do a video a while back where I talked about James Hudson who briefly visited this universe, which is the 616 pre-Secret Wars. And I'll put a link in the description to have the card pop up so you guys can get a refresher on that. But just as a reference, like this brief description of all the these things that Cyclops has been through and this is really just a real quick rundown but I mainly wanted to go into detail quite a bit about Cyclops because he is the reason why the younger X-Men were brought into this time period and that was because Beast of the present day had went back in time to get the younger X-Men in hopes to stop Cyclops from the present day preferably by reminding him the old times but worst case doing what needs to be done and present day Beast is barely hanging on to life trying to do this and that's because his secondary mutation is taking a step forward causing his body to break down <laughs> but real quick one thing that's really crazy is like when Beast takes them to the future, younger Cyclops is like, hey, if this is a trap, I'm like totally gonna blow your head off. And Beast is like, yeah, I'm sure you would, Scott, because in the future you're totally a murderer. 
<laughs> and I, he ain't say it like that, but it, it's pretty much what I'm sure he's thinking. So now, with these X-Men who are time displaced, this is really your lead up to how they came to the present time and became your X-Men blue team that we know today. And since traveling all the way to the present of the 616 universe and their standalone series picking up after the events of Battleworld and Reed Richards fixing the universe, it's here in the Prime universe where their story continues. And in case you guys are kind of wondering what happened to the other Cyclops, yeah, like he got ended back in Secret Wars. And this we covered back in the Black Panther uses the Infinity Gauntlet video. And that video was pretty much your Secret Wars rundown. But yeah, that was pretty much the end of Murder Cyclops. And the younger Cyclops we have now is really the one that's taken over. But in this current time, he's not really having it easy because people remember what the other Cyclops did. And even though this is the younger Cyclops who had not been through all that yet, as a result, he ends up suffering the consequences an issue that this younger beast has is he wants to get him and these original X-Men back to their original time. Like he realizes that it's hard out here in the future and because he can't exactly figure out how to get them back in time, he's come to a point where he's just hit a wall. And because at this point where he feels like science is failing him, he decides, you know what? I'm gonna try magic. And when he hears on the news of this Doctor Strange, master of the mystical arts, saving these people right outside of Idaho, he gets the idea like, hey, I need to see this guy he can help me figure this out. Because at this point, Hank is nearly desperate. And for someone who is used to figuring everything out by way of science, for the first time, he feels like, okay, like I'm in a place where this is just beyond me. But as it turns out, Doctor Strange is not able to help him out. And I know plenty of you guys are probably thinking like, this is Doctor Strange, he got the time stone. <laughs> yeah, no. Like the comics don't necessarily work like the film. Like he actually possesses the Eye of Agamotto, it's not the Infinity Stone, it's not the Time Stone. It doesn't work like that. Because the Sorcerer Supreme, he more so draws his magic from the Vashanti. And really since Sorcerer Supreme issue 40 something, like this is like forever ago. But ever since then, when he didn't side with this Trinity who supplies his power, Power. Since then, his resources have been kind of limited. And it's really because of this, he tells Hank that he really can't help him. And it's not like he really went into the whole backstory, but long story short, this is why. But he was able to tell him that magic is very relatable to science because there's certain rules that apply and there's certain guidelines you have to stay in, much like with science. But it was after this encounter that he had a little bit better of an understanding on magic. And after meeting Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange allowed him to keep the third eye of Horus, which would allow Hank to at least see the world the same way that Doctor Strange does. And that was really Hank's introduction or crash course into magic. And sooner than he would prefer, this would also be tested by Madeline Pryor from Earth 91240. And since the events from Secret Wars and after the creation of Prime Earth, she found herself in limbo where she usually resides, but in the limbo of Prime Earth. And it was from there that she found her way to Prime Earth where she would then invade and release all kind of demons and kaiju. Like she just crossed over and just went ham. But the thing is, when she appeared, Doctor Strange wasn't available and Beast was really the closest thing to a sorcerer that was available to go against her. And once again, for, for Hank, this was just bad timing because he just barely knew magic. Like he just met Doctor Strange. And the few spells that he was studying had more so to do with time travel because he was trying to get the X-Men back to their original time. So when this Madeline Pryor showed up, also known as the Goblin Queen, Hank had to get it together and learn something quick, fast, and in a hurry. And so one thing about Hank, when he can't figure something out, which is very rare, but when he comes to this place, he obsesses over it until something finally gives. And at this time in the Library of Occult, he's just reaching for different solutions, just trying different spells, hoping to discover something that he can use to fight the Goblin Queen and her demons. And in doing this, in using a number of different spells and different items and artifacts, and really just in desperation because he didn't have time to learn everything. And if he didn't figure it out like Hank always does, then pretty much everybody's gonna die. But it's here with this unknown mixture of artifacts that it seemed initially to take no effect at all, at the moment of his desperation, it started working, transforming him physically into an entirely different beast. And what's crazy, if you think back to how he became the blue beast, or how he would have had he not been pulled from time, that transformation is very similar. Because in that alternate timeline, the one we know as the main continuity, 
he was desperate to find a cure and in searching for that cure, he ended up furthering his mutation. And even though this Hank McCoy is pulled from the past, he ended up making the same decision as the Hank that pulled him to the future from the past, which is wild, like it just came full circle. But when the Goblin Queen seen him, when he came out and confronted her, she was impressed, but she didn't engage to fight him because as soon as she seen him, she already knew from that point that she had different plans for him because she already knew, even though Hank didn't know, she knew what he's capable of. And because of this, she retreated telling him that she would return because she needed to come back and manipulate him in a time of weakness. But for now, she just got up out of there. And when she left, Hank returned back to his regular form. And he really only turns into that beast when performing certain spells. But yeah, that'll do it for this one, guys. I mainly just wanted to see what you guys think about exploring more of X-Men Blue, perhaps gold, perhaps red, <laughs> perhaps all of the above. <laughs> like, just let me know what you guys think down in the comments. But that's really why for this one, I wanted to go kind of deep and hop into Marvel now, because that's where a lot of their history really starts from. But just hit me in the comments, let me know, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.